it's casual, not formal. It's hosted by Rory Pendlin. Oh, and Renee in tow. It's time to start the show. One, two, three, go! <laughs> Okay, welcome to another episode of It's Casual, and I'm going to bring up Renee Jaworski. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I'm very excited about this show because... As am I. We've been waiting for this for such a long time. We've been trying for a while, and we finally and, got it. And everybody in the audience knows and loves this human being that we have backstage. Cheers. Yes, cheers. Cheers. Um, Everybody loves I know I don't drink beer on the show much, but today I felt like I should drink beer. <laughs> if you were ever going to, Rory, if you were ever going to, tonight was the night to do it. Yep. It was this night and then burn it down with Tom Cheshire. I remember that was my birthday show and you guys were drinking a lot. So That's we, true. I forgot about it. that. Yeah, I did drink with Tom. We do it in good times and we do it in bad times and whatever time you are having and however people are getting through it, I support everybody. Um, this I is do, a good time. This is a, this is a good time. And we do want to say that we're going into September and MM Farwell is Farwell is putting together a beautiful, um, a lot of events at Cosmos Creative TV for suicide prevention, which is something all of us here at the network totally believe in. Mm -hmm. So um, anyone who has any ideas or wants to get involved, you can also reach out. You can reach out to me or to MM Farwell. I know a lot of people are getting really interested in this and it's really important to protect our mental health. And, you know, so Cosmos is going to be stepping up there. So just wanted to put that little plug in there. And a shave. I just realized I forgot to shave. <laughs> A shave and a haircut. Damn it. A shave and a haircut. I'm a little stubbly now. You are beloved. I just want to take a moment um, and and talk about Rory Penland for a second, everybody. Um, this That's man, fine. this this man, I will I will put you off screen and I will do this. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I want to say this. I mean, Dennis and I talk about this all the time. Then um, Rory Penland has been the most consistent show host and performer that I have ever known. I mean, we know that artists tend to get a little weird and a little eccentric and all that. Rory is left brain and right brain. He shows up, he is consistent no matter what is going on I in show his up. life. He's very professional and he does a lot of research for all of his shows. For every hour you see Rory on air, there's many, many hours and then his entire expansive career. So people are getting together behind Rory because, do you wanna talk a little bit about Guinness for a second? <laughs> Uh, okay, real quick. Mm -hmm. Take it away. We have people waiting. Let's do it. Let's talk a little bit about it for people who want to continue to support. Thank you to everybody who has been supporting this. We are trying to raise a thousand dollars in order to go to Guinness. If you didn't see Rory do his 800 and how many voices was it that we did the other day? 847. In one hour, he set mm -hmm. the world record and he's going to do it in a live club in Orlando. No, nope. I'm um, going up to Lake City, Florida, which is Lake North City, Florida, Florida, just under the just under okay. the Georgia border. Uh, it's a very mm -hmm. small venue, only 35 seats, uh, right. and it's the last Friday of October. Uh, okay. It's October 28th, I believe, mm -hmm. and I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be doing the Elvis show on Saturday. I'll be doing Elvis, Dragon Elvis, yeah, uh, full full hour set. Uh, but that show Friday night will be the 800 plus voice challenge, and I'm hoping to do I'm hoping to do more than 850. Right. Um, and I think, and I think, and, and to, for people, and again, I'm going to streamline the presentation so that I can get, so I can get more voices in. I, you know, I'm right. hoping for what I'm hoping to do is, is yeah, get the, the, the celebrity voices done completely. And then I won't have to do my character voice <laughs> and the chicken impressions and stuff like that. Yeah. So, right. but, but I've got that ready in case I need to. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, that's going to be live uh, in October in Lake city, Florida. Right. And um, how can people support? I have at Iconic Art Rory as a banner here. Um, if you um, want. We're still to trying to find out if we can contact Guinness and mm -hmm. send them the link to show them what I did on Saturday. 
And this is your uh, PayPal. So they realize right? this, is this is your PayPal. Serious. That's my PayPal. Mm -hmm. Iconic R uh, Art Rory at uh, Gmail. Gmail.com. Okay. At, okay. So yeah, at Gmail.com. Sorry, I should put that there. But that's PayPal. And People have already been sending some and some people are saying they're going to match whatever's in there. So I encourage everybody, if you want to see great entertainment and if you're really, you know, if you want to, I mean, this is really Rory's entire life and career he has put into this and nobody else on earth is doing this. Nobody else has this talent. Everybody, I mean, we packed out the house when you did that. Everybody was yeah. so enlightened. I mean, there's so much darkness in the world right now to have somebody doing something like you're doing brings joy and peace and togetherness. It's exactly what the world needs. And when people are watching you, they get to tune out of the bad stuff and tune in to the good stuff. And speaking of good stuff, yes, and you too, it's therapy. Like Rory says, this is therapy for, for all of us. Um, so, and of course, speaking of therapy, shout out to Diane Call, who wrote the, wrote and performed the theme song that you heard. Love our theme song. The, I love, love Diane it, love Call. It. She does all these amazing themes and all that. And I love um, the theme song for General Howitzer. I mean, even oh more than this gosh. one. Yes. Yeah, I know, right? It's so ominous. So yes, it's perfect. It's, it's so great. But I, I, I do want to say perfect. it's perfect. Yes. We oh. love you, Rory. Our hearts are with you. Um, you're a huge inspiration. And um, I'm just really honored to get to know you and to work with you. And I want to say that Thank I don't you. say it anywhere near enough. I say it behind your back. There's nobody I'm happier working with than you. Let's stop crying. I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. True. Thank you, darling. And now for your musical styling pleasure. <laughs> We have chickens and pigs, oink, 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 oink. And I don't know if he wants to come out swinging. I don't know if he wants to. He's, he's holding his guitar right now. I see him in the green room. I don't know if he wants to come out and just play a number. Do you think we should just let him play a number right, right up front like I we think do we with should. my cat? Yeah, because he's ready. He's okay. ready. Jeff, are you ready to go? Are you, great? are you ready to go, Jeff? Yeah, I, he's laughing. I think that means a yes. All right, let's bring him on. Jeff Wait. Evans. All Bye, right. Everybody. Hello. There he is. Should have done that beforehand. In the flip of a fly's wing, everything turned around. All it tasted garbage, couldn't keep it down. Dreaming of a turtle, lost at sea. I live 
at the corner, a wall, don't walk, hang around that alone, kid. Road the sun, from the moon, killing it, my desires that I've heard, I'm a bird. Right across the desert with my feet on fire I'm a bird, I'm a bird Right across the desert with my feet on fire I said I'm a bird, I'm a bird Right across the desert with my feet on fire I'm a bird, I'm a bird Right across the desert with my feet on fire Right. Oh my gosh, you are so amazing. Thank you. You're very sweet. Let me get a little bit more of the guitar in the thing. If I can do it without knocking everything over, a little slide this way, a little slide this way, a little slide this way. Got that? Got one thing. So yeah, I think that's good. All right. Hi. Thanks for having me. Oh man, it's our pleasure. We were so glad we were able to get you in tonight. That was that's wonderful. Again, we tried to get you on the show a few months back, and uh, just couldn't get through the tech gremlins that time. And again, you sound great. You look great. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Uh, well, hit fire. All right. Now that and that brings me to my first question. You you're based in Atlanta now. Have yes. you always have you always been in Atlanta? Has that always been your home? No, um, I was born in Macon General Hospital, and I grew up in Perry, Georgia, and I moved to Southwest Florida for high school, and I came back to Athens for college, though I didn't finish. I went back down to um, Southwest Florida to write for newspapers, but I um, always wanted to live in Atlanta, and I moved here on May the 2nd, 1986, and here I still So live. you are a Georgia boy? Yes. Yeah, yes. I'm a Florida boy, so I got to find out where in Southwest Florida you were. <laughs> uh, Fort Charlotte, Punta Gorda, uh, in between Sarasota and Fort Myers. Okay. Yeah, Coastal. done some comedy oh, down there. Yeah, yeah, Bay really more. It's not really the ocean. You can get to the ocean, but you got to go about 15, 20 miles. Mainly it's the Peace River Inlet that comes up into it. And people think it's the beach, and it technically is, but it's not the beach beach. <laughs> <laughs> understood, understood. Um so when did you start uh when did you start you know, with, the, with the music when did that grab a hold of you in your life i was in college i was seeing rem for a dollar for anybody besides asking who they were i was great bands all over you know all of a sudden you know, it was a nice age to start blowing up you know there was um classic rock was still a thing you know these people who we look back as legacy acts now were basically mostly in their 30s and stuff you know i don't remember yeah. their 40s really some were even younger, knocking stuff around, and uh, seemed like a good thing to do. It just took me a long time to get to where I could. I felt good enough doing it on stage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you practice, practice, practice. Uh, um, yeah. If I practice, you practice, practice more, I might have gotten on stage a little earlier. Here and there. <laughs> um, when did you actually start writing your own songs? Um, I always wrote things. I, I used to call them poems, but then um my um first guitar i'm like okay well i'm gonna write songs i mean i sure couldn't um i still have my first guitar i bought it in november of 1982 so it's gonna be 40 years old this year um but it's an acoustic and yeah you strum around it took me forever to learn how to strum because i'm left-handed and i wanted to play regular way like right-handed people do because so i could play other people's guitars because nobody really has left-handed guitars sitting around waiting for left-handed people to show up and play um so, yeah, it took me forever to sort that business out, but, you know, I sorted it out. But, yeah, I was writing all along, so then what was poems turned into songs. Okay. Basically, more or less. So, and you love guitars? Yes. How many yes. guitars do you have? I got to ask. Let me think. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to downsize one or two of them. One of them's in consignment somewhere. Let's see. Five electric guitars. That acoustic, I've got a 12-string acoustic that needs serious work because it spent a bunch of time not in a case in a, um, 
let's say moist and humid environment in my last home before here um and the uh, bridge is coming loose things have to be like glue re like reheated loose and glued it's, it's some work needs to do on it i mean we'll count him still even though i can't play him right now so let's yeah. see five that's seven um i, I did give uh, a resonator away to my friend sylvia um and she named it pearl which was a good name for a guitar so but i don't have that anymore so i can't count that one um a mandolin eight um i've got a cigar box guitar that i don't really play this nine and i feel like i'm leaving something out um yeah. but you know yeah maybe may, maybe there's 10 it feels like there should be 10 but at one point there was 12. um and it feels number. like yeah yeah even numbers are generally better because that way they don't fall over so what you have in your hand is your favorite am i right uh yeah basically it's one of the lesser expensive ones um it's a it's a fender but it's a, a squire fender which is generally considered um you know further down the line it's just a really good piece of wood and um that's um you'll hear, from her, you'll hear from her from time to time um how's she doing really, not really well um no, i'm gonna lose her before too long um, she, um, she'll be 16 on Thanksgiving if she makes it, and I hope she does, but uh, I'm not confident. Um, but she's eating really, really good and walking around good and doing doggy things right now. So, yeah, good days, bad days. And um, what was the question? <laughs> uh, we were talking about guitars, and I asked yeah. you if that was your favorite. Oh, yes, that's the one, yeah. Um, I put really good... <laughs> Put, I put really good pickups in it. Um, they're technically for anybody who's a gear heady person. They're uh, Fender Custom Shop 51 No Caster pickups, which is back a very, very early Telecaster. And they're just really warm and lovely. I love the neck. I love you know, everything about this, this guitar that I, I bought for 150 bucks. And, uh, you know, like I said, I've got m rather more expensive guitars. Not that many. Most of mine are fairly cheap. <laughs> But yeah, I actually, hands, yeah, yeah. I actually bought an acoustic myself for fifty bucks and um, and like a secondhand shop. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not like a Salvation Army, but it was actually like I mean they had some actually nice some nice stuff in there. You know, it's not like with yeah, you knew and you stuff and that and people all. just donated. You know, yeah. And oh, it was a okay. nice guitar, and I was like, hmm, <laughs> I can't play guitar. <laughs> You'd be surprised. It's really, not, it's really not very hard. Um, it's really not. You'd be surprised how much you can do with, with just little bits of here and there and stuff. How, how I should try. Yeah. How um, long have you had? I've had it for about six months now. I still have to re find somebody to restring it for me. There's two strings missing. So yeah. You but it's a, a black one. I you know I like to sing Roy Orbison and it's a black guitar and I just I saw it hey. and I was like, fifty bucks. Dude, hey, that's not bad. Uh, do you know what make model it is or whatever? I don't. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, black it's been a while since I picked it up, but I, I can go run and get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll run and uh, get it while you play some songs. How's that? Yeah, okay, sure. I'll do oh, that. Yeah. So cool. I'm sure there's a guitar shop near you that um, could mm -hmm. slap things on it really easily. So. Yeah. I think well, I'm just going to get some strings, strings, and next time I, my brother plays guitar, so next time I go see my brother, I think I'm going to see if it'll restrain it for me. <laughs> He'll do it. He better. He's your brother. <laughs> ah, I've yeah. already talked to him about it. He's 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 willing. <laughs> okay, so if you could play a couple of songs for us, this is a good okay. place for that. All right, let me see. What, what are we doing here? Do, do, do you want to... I have one that I know Renee likes, but I'll save it for a little bit. Um, this is called Honey Can I Strum Your Banjo. It's very similar in some way to the one that Renee likes, but um, I'll save that a little bit. So yeah, this one's called Honey Can I Strum Your Banjo. Let me whistle my wet.
Honey can't honey can't honey can't strum your banjo and the moonlight by the stairs. Honey can't strum your banjo. You only hear it fill the air. Everyone says I'm doing fine. I don't need no proof. Honey can't strum your banjo. Want to hear it tell the truth? Honey can't strum your banjo. I think I know that tune. Might like to give it a go myself. I can get some elbow. Everyone says I'm a doing fine. I don't need no proof. Honey can't strum your banjo. I want to hear it tell the truth. Woke up one night in a ditch. Woke up one morning, didn't know what for. Prettiest girl in Atlanta, come walking up to my door. sound like the one that I love so much, Jeff. That is that classic Jeff Evans. I don't know what it is. It's the first time I heard you, and I think it was on um, Cam H or something. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, right. And and I said, who is this creature that I've never, I mean, nobody does what Jeff Evans does. Did you, you just call him a creature? He's like, <laughs> he's, a, he's a creature. He's, not, he's an ethereal angel. I see. Oh. Nobody does music like Jeff. I mean, Jeff, you know you're unique. We're, to what do you yes. attribute your uniqueness? How do you get to be that creative where you're outside the box like a real artist would be instead of just being derivative? How did you get there? Well, probably because I was born with six fingers and six toes on each hand and each foot. <laughs> and um, um, I, didn't, I didn't get to keep them. But um, Like a Hemingway they, cat. A Hemingway <laughs> cat, yeah. Uh, I, I didn't get to keep them, but I think that they're still there. When I, you know, they say like when somebody in war, you know, they blow off, they get their leg blowed off. You know, they say that you can still feel them having, they still feel that their legs there. Probably that. I still feel, um, yeah, like the six fingers and six toes are there. So I get to, I get to balance things differently per finger. I guess that might be the best answer. Not a very good answer, but it might be the best answer. <laughs> It was a memorable yeah. answer. And again, it was outside the box. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. No, I just, yeah. I mean, I was, I was just a weirdo. Um, you know, a nice weirdo, but a weirdo all the same. Um, a lovable weirdo. Well, that'll work. Um, depends on who you ask, but yeah. Yeah, I'll go with that. Sure. Sure. Um, can you play another for us, please? I can. This is actually a new song. I say new at this point when you... When you've written it within a year and a half and you haven't recorded it yet, um, it's still a new song. So, so I'm going to do this again. Um, this is called Flavor is Power. Man or 
had the market, she was hanging with a farmer, could not help but harm her, and he would not make amends. She tried to push me away, said we could still be friends. She come from a long line of swans, sing, hum, and whistle, back Flaps of feathers and reckless swings, signifying dismissal. Oh Lord, I want to be her him. Now she's floating downstream. I'm a learn to swim. She tastes like cayenne fennel seed. Maybe just a hint of weed or dandelions, more than flowers, flavor is power. some Jeff Evans magic right there. That was so yep. relaxing. I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's nice. It's nice when you know when you write a good one and a lot of them you got to go work on and that was like a 15 minute job and I wrote half of it in the shower. <laughs> I love the way acoustics you write. are good in the shower. They're yes. really good. And I love the way you you're you're one of these I know Troy Moore is someone who's really interesting with the way he chooses his lyrics. You're another one. You don't, yeah, you and Troy, you know, it's like you don't write what's expected. You write something that no one else has seen or heard before. So you're well, filling a space that no one else is filling. Okay. Yeah. Well, we've all heard all this other stuff so much for so long. I mean, it's like, yeah. These songs, yeah. this type of songs have been going on for 60 years or whatever. So, yeah, look for a tweet, look for a little weasel over here, look for a little something over there. And, uh, yeah, before you know it, song's done. Most of the really good ones come off like that one. I sat down and spent a few minutes uh, and, you know, on the words. The music fell in place right away. And then I got in the shower and uh, talked my way through the rest of the words. You know, it's like some, sometimes you really rewrite the hell out of one and you get it. Um, when you went finally, but yeah, not always. What was not the, always. do you remember the first line that came to you for that particular song? 
from the start. I wrote that one start to finish from the very top. Met her at the market. She was hanging with a farmer who could not help and harm her, and he would not make amends. That's, yeah. And then I wrote it that was eventually. I don't always. That's also when I think it's a pretty good um, song is when you write it from the start and you don't have, like, a lot of things you write and you'll say, oh, that's a perfect middle verse or that's a perfect last verse and then you got to go backwards or whatever. Well, that one, right. some of them, um, just like the other one I'm going to play now for you that you do like, um, I can tell, I can talk about that one for a second before I play it. That one was just as fast. You know, I, you sit down, you have the thought, and boom, think it. Don't, you know, write it down quick or you forget it. I will, I have, I have forgotten some good songs that I didn't write down. Mm -hmm. right anyway this is um this is one of renee's champion for a long 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 yes that's the first song this is my favorite too this is my favorite too it's the first one i ever heard him this was my introduction to jeff evans everybody this one right here yeah well damn okay well that worked out well i guess okay worked out very well yes i'm addicted thank god i didn't play something like country cocksucker first you would never Interesting. No, I still would have loved it. I still would have loved it. Yeah, I that think the first rough. song I heard you do was much tamer than this one. And then when I heard this one, I was like, oh, wow, now that's different. Okay. <laughs> what was the first one you heard me do? That's do you remember? Fun. Yeah. Do you remember what was the first one you heard, Roy? I can't remember. It, this was back back before we even met each other last year in Atlanta. Uh, yeah. Back in the pandemics. All right. This one yeah. is a song about a dog that goes to a groomer and has a, it does not have a good time. Um, and this is, again, it's about a dog who went to the groomer and did not have a good time. Um, what are all these little flashing things showing up on there? I'll make sure I'm not losing my whatever, because I do lose connection a fair no, amount. No, no, but... no, you're good. You're good. It's just a banner oh. I was put on. That's oh, banners. It. Okay, yeah, banners. Just ignore. Okay. Just ignore. Stay right, in I your will, guitar. I will, I will ignore it. Blind. I, I work at, um, I, I'm a dog walker and a pet sitter. We have lots of puppies stay here with me and Molly. Um and I also work at a dog groomer um, when I'm the receptionist, which seemed like one of the least likely things I would have ever done with my life. But here I am being apparently a pretty good receptionist. And but also when you're a receptionist and it's a small dog grooming company, you um, have to do more than one thing sometimes. So this doggy had had a bath. I was probably the one who gave it the bath and doggy needed a blow dryer. Uh, to dry off so it would, you know, you can't cut dog's hair while it's wet because the electric trimmers don't work on wet hair. So you put a blow dryer on them. And these are not your, you know, handheld blow dryers that you do in the bathroom, whatever, you know, they're machines or whatever, you know, or some of them are small machines. Anywho, um, I'm sitting here on the table, got this small dog in my lap, and I've got a, um, um, a blow dryer nozzle about halfway up the dog's butt trying to get it dry. And I said, somebody's booty is going to be dry. Dry is the booty. I'm like, that's a fucking song. Okay, that's a song. All right, so I wrote two verses quick, got the dog dry, went home for lunch, and wrote the rest of them immediately, basically. But this is about a dog who goes to the groomer again and decides to have a good time. And it, I'm sorry I'm playing so many songs in the same shapes and stuff. Uh, I probably should have thought this out a little more beforehand. But anyway... Somebody's booty's gonna be dry, dry his booty. Somebody's booty's gonna be dry, dry his booty. Somebody's booty's gonna be dry. Air blowing up ass, don't know why. Somebody's booty's gonna be dry, dry his booty. Sitting in a crate of a doggy bed, barking at the groomer. Sitting in a crate of a doggy bed, barking at the groomer. Sitting in a crate of a doggy bed, smoking the park with current sheds. Sitting in a crate of a doggy bed, barking at the groomer. Soap on my belly and water my face. I do not like this. Soap on my belly and water my face. I do not like this. Soap on my belly and water my face. Drown that bone with one big shake. Soap on my belly and water my face. I do not like this. Somebody's booty is going to be dry. Dry is the booty. Somebody's booty is going to be dry. Dry is the booty. Somebody's booty is going to be dry. They're blowing up ass, don't know why. Somebody's booty is going to be dry. Dry is the booty. Yeah, cut this shipping all over the place. Mom, get me. 
cutting and snipping all over the place. Mama, come and get me, cutting and snipping all over the place. I'm going to leave that groomer's face, cutting and snipping all over the place. Mama, come and get me. Back from playing the mud in the rain, splashing through the puddles. Back from playing the mud in the rain, splashing through the puddles. Back from playing the mud in the rain, bottles go call the rumors again. Back from playing the mud in the rain, splashing through the puddles. Somebody's boot is going to be dry, dry is the boot. Somebody's boot is going to be dry, dry is the boot. Somebody's boot is going to be dry. Every woman of ass don't know why. Somebody's boot is going to be dry, dry is the boot. Dry is the boot. That's it. Dry is the boot. That's it. <laughs> and I loved watching Rory Penland's face in the green room, just smiling the whole time. <laughs> you know, Jeff, when you play that live, do you love seeing the smiles that that everybody's just enjoying and surprised? The, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's I, I like it when you write one that everybody likes. Nobody so far has not liked it, or at least they haven't told me that. You know, so yeah, it's it is nice to see people, and it's much easier on stage actually because I'm when I'm playing for a phone camera, I'm way too much focused on you know, blah blah blah, doing this shit than you know like noticing people like making comments and stuff. But on stage, you can really see it, and that's what that works really nicely. So, yeah, I actually really expected Renee to do a reaction shot of me on that one, but <laughs> I was going to. The, I'll tell you the only reason I didn't. The only reason I usually didn't when I'm is, very animated like that on the yeah, side, she does. She'll, I, she'll put a picture. I've had to make a decision because Jeff was worried that he was having connection problems yeah. so, with the banners. So then I said, if I flash you up there, he might think that there was a, a tech problem. So That's I just true. Didn't, that That's was true. the only reason. That good was call. The only good call. Yeah. Actually, I, I wouldn't have. Uh, what flashes up on my screen when I'm having connection problems is um, says you're offline now. So all this stuff starts flashing. I think, oh shit, I'm offline again. But so yeah. far, have I have I gone offline yet? No, you have no. not. You are steady you have as been smooth as silk this whole show. So oh, yeah, this, is, this is the new phone. Um, it does go offline occasionally, but not so long as some of them. Oh, wrong way. Not so long as some of them. By the way, listen to uh, Rory when you uh, learn to string a guitar. Um, don't <laughs> put one on the opposite way. Like this high E string is wrapped the opposite way. And the easy thing you do, you go tune up, tune up, and tune up, and then you bang, pop, bang, bang. But the trick is, you have to wind them all in the same direction. I found out I'm only missing one, actually. This is a Johnson, by the way. Ooh. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the store that I bought this at, the store I buy most of my stuff at in Atlanta is called Earth Shaking Music, and I love these people. Um, they they sell a lot of Johnson work. Yeah, that's gorgeous, dude. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. when I saw it, I was like, 50 bucks? Man, I don't play, but I'm going to buy that damn thing. <laughs> which, uh, which string are you missing? Uh, looks like the one right in the middle. Uh, okay. The small string in the middle. Small string in the middle is a G, yeah. Yeah. You're missing your G string. I'm sorry, that's the oldest <laughs> joke in the car. You know, Boy, the thing keeps moving around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, what are you going to do? Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Give me a slide, give me a slide, give me a slide. Well, you can ask more questions if you want to, too. I mean, I... Well, I was going to ask you who some of your influences were when you were coming. You said you started getting really interested in music around the college years. Uh, you know, yeah. who, was, who, was, who were your big influences? Well, um, then and now are kind of the same, but also different, um, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah. Uh, your standard uh, Rolling Stones, Bob Dylan, Neil Young, took a couple more years, but yeah, I got into those people. But then um, I got a lot into like the um, 20s and 30s acoustic blues guys. You know, these guys, street corner players, some of them were bands, combos. There's a great band called the Memphis Jug Band that I recommend to anybody that literally has a jug and just, you know, a bunch of people playing, you know, beat up old instruments and stuff. Um, and um, Willie and the Poor Boys. Of, what's that? Willie and the Poor Boys. <laughs> yeah, Willie and the Poor Boys are doing exactly that. They're doing a jug band thing, basically. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, so a lot of that slide playing I got into, and um, I don't necessarily write songs like all those people, but, you know, they're with me all the time. You know, I, I think it's, you're doing your own yeah, thing. 
I write more probably st song lyric style wise like the old twenties and thirties blues guys. I don't write a bunch of songs like like the Stones where I'm a stud strutting in my thing. You know, I don't write a lot of those, and I don't write a lot of like you know fourteen verse stanza song stories like Bob Dylan does. So I have a couple of them, you know, and. Um, and so, yeah, you, you love these people and they inform everything you do, but you still, if you want to be yourself, you had to dig around a little and a little bit more to the gumbo, basically. Oh, yeah. Well, like, yeah, I really like slide. Um, give me a little volume on this, maybe. Do too. Hang on one second. I'm going to turn his amp up just a hair. Okay. You like this poodle doodle? Looking good, Miss Molly. <laughs> Molly Wally Doodle. And now I can I can flash the banner real quick. Here we go. This <laughs> is the Guinness. This is to support the Guinness World Record. It is right here. Thank you to anyone who has already supported. By the way, since we're talking to the audience about the show, this is the second to the last show of this year. Wow. Um, we're going to start doing howitzer We're going to start doing double yeah. howitzer uh, every Tuesday and Thursday <laughs> for, for five months, for, for all through January. Yeah. Um, we may do, I'm going to talk to Renee about doing maybe a Christmas or end of the year show. Yeah, possibly. that would be so um, fun. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing double howitzer duty. A double dose of howitzer, a double dose of peach tea. To is catch how up on my howitzer shows. I do uh -huh. think that we should market it as a double dose of peach tea, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> I will leave it out. You're beautiful. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, darling. All right, let's call Settle Down Blues. This one, this is one where the lyrics, the front of them at least, are actually lifted from an old 20s or 30s song. Ain't gonna, ain't gonna, get ma uh, ain't gonna marry, ain't gonna settle down. It's quite several. A lot of the old, that early blues stuff was oral tradition where people would take certain lines that everybody used, common lines, shared lines, and then go put their own twist to it, which is pretty much what I did with this one. But it literally comes directly from that early 20s and 30s blues stuff. The only difference is if, if I was playing it like them, I would be doing like a... Where I, don't, I, I do that some, but not that much. Mainly I play more like I generally do everything else. <laughs> Alabama, don't need you here. 
to Alabama. Tell me down, need you here. Breaking on the hard, drinking off beer. I do so love the good. sound of the slide. That's me that's, too. I do. The slide is everything to me. I love yeah. it. I love it, and it has different tuning too, right? For non-musicians, yes. right, Jeff? What is the tuning when you use a slide? Really, really good uh, musicians can play standard tuning slide, but they're generally not singing at the same time because the intervals are all weird. You got to do a whole lot of muting with fingers on this stuff. Really hard, really, really hard. This is just an open G tuning where it's, the guitar is basically tuned to a G chord. Where if I go, well, got a G. You know, C, you play a lot of stuff with one finger. A lot of stone stuff is done with, like that, you're just playing, adding stuff onto it. Stuff like that, because you've got all those open notes ringing out together. It's very sympathetic, almost like a sitar, but much simpler. A uh, simple tar, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, there are different tune-ins for slide, and um, G is the one that's used, I use mostly. For Burmese mouth, I use a different one. But um, yeah, yeah, that's all I can say about that. Yeah, it's uh, it's... It's yeah, it's it's very vocal. The slide is itself is very very vocal. Oh, drinking time. Ah. I'll finish that one off. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, we we've gone forty six minutes, and I haven't asked you about chicken and pigs yet. Okay. So please Ask. tell us about that. Hi. Right. Well, um, original um, um, came from uh, uh came from a dream, um. Day, daydream. I was working as a landscaper and I was um, off for because it rained or something. So I'm taking a midday nap and I had this dream where um, there's a big barnyard and I don't usually remember my dreams as well. But I guess if you name your band after them, it's easier to remember the dream. Um, this big barnyard and all the barnyard animals were milling around and um, there's a stage at the end. It had instruments on it. And at some point, a dog gets up on the stage, goes to the microphone and says, barnyard animals, please welcome chickens and pigs. And the chickens <laughs> and pigs in the barnyard came up out of the barnyard onto the stage and started playing music. And it was just instrumental music. There weren't any words or anything, but it was amazing. It was closely I can compare it to. It's like Sun Ra or something. It was just way out there, space jazz stuff sounding. And I woke up, and I couldn't remember any of the music, of course. Not that I could have played it, but the name was there. So, yeah, that's where it came from. And this this is a group that you play with? Yes. Uh, well, it's more of a collective. Right now, it's kind of a bit more of a group, because I've played with the same couple people for a year now. But mm -hmm. I never had, at times over the years, the same people. But lots of times, it'll be just, like, loose, where, okay, you know, one thing about Atlanta musicians that are that are pretty a good pretty good Atlanta musicians uh, tend to be in more than one band, and they they might have a gig already when you want them to have a gig. And as we get older, they've got kids in volley, volleyball practice or game or whatever. You know, yeah, all this shit gets in the way. You know, when you're just trying to put a band together and play a fucking show. You know, um, so what I ended up doing for the largest part is um, make, basically a collective. You know, just book the uh, book the shows and see who's available you know at one point i had 10 drummers you know and oh, wow. most, yeah most of them began with they no, not all at the same time but you know, percussion section yeah that would be a very full you're gonna group. do woodblock you're gonna do cowbell you're gonna do trumpet. Yeah, yeah, you, you can't pay 10 drummers <laughs> drummers are like horn players they want to get paid to show up um actually actually not near as bad as horn players but um so yeah i'd book the gig and see okay who's available um uh, who can play you uh, ask somebody you can't okay go down the line you know and then pick somebody and then you show up with somebody sometimes it's a three piece sometimes it's a five piece sometimes it's just two piece with um I, at one point me and kim Ware were, were all that was chickens and pigs she, she <laughs> I played guitar and she played drums and uh we that went on for nine months a year pretty close to that and on um, 
Um, God bless her. She's moved on to much bigger and better things now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so what I've done now, since I basically have the same people playing all the time um, with me now, for the most part, um, when they're not available, because we've been doing this for over a year now, it doesn't feel like chickens and pigs if they're not there. So I put together a side band, which is basically what chicken and the pigs used to be like, which mm-hmm. is the Jeff Evans Porchestra. Um, because okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was one of those things that pops to you. And you're like, oh, Christ, I got to do this. This is too good of an idea. I have to actually do this. So, yeah, the Porchestra was what played in Athens uh, with Bob Ross and everybody at, at Hendershots. Silvio okay. played some, and um, Bob played, and I had a bass player. And, uh, yeah, Porchestra is basically all hands on deck. Chicken and pigs, you know, but yeah, it works. It works out like it does. Sometimes it's a chicken and pig. Yeah, it's just it's loose. That's the okay. nicest way to put it. Hey, you were talking about doing the gigs. Uh, if you could play anywhere in the world, where would you like to do a gig? Anywhere, anywhere in the world. world. Where would you like to play? Woo! Y'all talk for a second. I'm going to take a piss and think on that one. <laughs> you know, that's why I love Jeff Ed's. We have never had a guest say that before. Pick up and go to the bathroom. <laughs> We've never had it, but now that, you know, let me tell you, I can sum Jeff Evans up in one sentence. You, um, We've never had it before, but now we need it, right? It's like, he, he fills needs. Again, it's different. Like, Dry is the Booty. I didn't know I needed that song. And then I heard the song and I said, where has this been my whole life? Dry is the Booty. Who writes songs like that, you know? And who says, I will think on that question while I go take a piss. Okay, well, I'm going to ask you a question I was going to ask him, but actually it would be better if you answered it. All right. He's got a lot of love out there. There's a lot of fans for Jeff and for yes. Chickens and Pigs. Um, where do you think, where do you think that all comes from? I think it has to do with the way that he connects with an audience and connects with his art. That's what I truly believe because nobody else does that. And he makes every person feel seen and heard and respected. He respects his fans like they're his own friends. Oh, that's so sweet. Who wouldn't love that? In a lot of cases, they are. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know you. Any place in the world does, um, um, can I get electricity there? Yes. Okay, even if they're not set up for electricity. Let's just say that they'll find a way. You know, the Buddhists will run and get electricity. <laughs> okay. <laughs> From right, the devil, whatever. I think, and this probably goes back to the old blues stuff or whatever that I love so much. I think my favorite place that I would, anywhere in the world I could play would be on the bottom of the Mississippi River. On the bottom? Yes. You can't play on the top. I can't, I can't walk on water for fuck's sake. <laughs> Okay, so some kind of dome underneath the Mississippi. No, no dome. I want the fishes to come into play, too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All the sea creatures so should, should not be. Chickens and catfish. All the catfish, all the, yeah, the catfish, the uh, Vietnamese slice, that they wouldn't be in Mississippi River, probably. <laughs> um, yes, uh, tilapia are bottom feeders, too. Um, but sure, yeah, I'm, I'm sure w- once it got cranked up, a lot of the top feeders would come down and see what's going on. So, yeah, that, that's my answer. I like to play on the on the, bo- on the floor of the Mississippi River. <laughs> uh, yeah, interesting very, answer. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have expected less. Uh, <laughs> very intellectual challenges involved, I would think. But, yeah, I'll go with that. Uh, what, are, what are some of your favorite tunes that you've written? What are some of your personal favorites? Personal favorites. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm a bird, the first one I played. Um, I like the new one that I played a lot. Drives the booty. Everybody likes it. I like it too, I guess. Um, um, wow, that's that's like tricky. It, like it. It's like they say you're talking about your children or whatever, you know. Um, in this case, you're talking about like 60 or 70 children. Actually, more than that, but I, I disown the ones, other ones. So probably, yeah, you're talking about 50 or 60 children. I've got nine records out so um old people i think is very good i like that one i think that's a pretty solid song um that probably be a good one to play now let me change guitars here um yeah just all of the dog songs duck ate the turtle i like um there, i got there are a lot of dog songs all right so what did i say old people yeah this one's fairly short and to the point. One reason I like this, this might be the best one. Lost Dogs is really good. Green Lights, I like a lot. Falling Down. Like I said, I got a bunch of songs I like, but. 
I'm going to get rid of that um, tremolo now. I don't generally play tremolo for a whole show, but I seem to be doing it somewhat now. Um, I love I love what a musician is. He's talking about tremolo. It's uh, it's going to sound like a, it's going to sound like that. Mm -hmm. Jeff, yeah. Jeff, I, Jeff I, tell us what a tremolo is. Tell us about tremolo. God, I don't know. It just makes the sound go long. It makes the sound go just like what you've been hearing, but I've done a fairly mild version so far. Um, it just go um, 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 or if you have the uh, intensity and the speed knobs up, um, 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 generally somewhere between the two. Ooh, okay, you can come down a little bit. This is Earl. That was Blondie I was playing. This is Earl. Um, I did right for a festival uh, show last year and dragged him out and played him. And I think I, we played the show. Oh, God. Yeah. We played the show. This was back, no, two years ago. No, nah, nah, it was last year. It was last year. I'm sorry. I can't keep track of stuff. Um, and um, it was actually the whatever it would have been fourth anniversary of Tom Petty dying and uh, his middle name was Earl and he played a guitar a lot like this in Traveling Wilburys. So this is Earl. Uh, Kim and Ware just uh, chimed in. She said Bulldozer is a kick-ass song. Oh, well, I like Bulldozer too. See, I see again that your children, you know, you know, <laughs> kicked in the ass by someone once the show's over. Some song's going to boot me and say, hey, you've got me. You know, and uh, that'll happen too. So anyway, uh, this, this is a lot louder than uh, Blondie. I'm going to try to, oh, I can even work with this. They knock down all the time. They don't hurt.
great. Jeff, where can people find your music? Wow, <laughs> pretty much come over here. <laughs> I'm going to Jeff's house, everybody. Yeah, hurry up, hurry up. It's, it's a lot for me. Um, I've got one record and I of, of all of them that is on YouTube and Spotify and everything, and it's the free range record, and it looks like this. Um the uh, that was on every all the socially things. I need to put the new the newest one on there, um, and because I have not, and it's a very good record. This was a pandemic record. Uh, basically, I tried to make it just at home with a little recorder, and it sounded horrible. So I ended up going into a studio. But this one's almost completely me. No drums, or I don't think it's even bass even. But this one is called "Guitars, Food, Music, Beer, Dog." Um, you can um, hit me up with an email. My uh, when I I guess if my if this phone's working, I'll start back doing some Blue Mondays on Kimono. Um, you hit me up on there. You send me messages. I'll, I'll send CDs out. You know, I'm not shy about that. Post office knows me. Um, got any gigs coming up uh, that people can go to to see you? Yeah, um, a bunch of a bunch of kind of outdoor festival things in October. The best gig coming up right now is Tuesday, October the 18th. We're playing at the Earl um, here in Atlanta, in it's actually in East Atlanta Village. I played there a bunch. It's a great room, and um, we're playing with a band uh, from Detroit uh, called Jeremy Porter and the Tucos, and they are so badass. He's been doing this for 35 years. He's about my age, but he was on stage a lot sooner than I was, and he's really badass. Uh, he's uh, his band's touring, and we're we're playing with them uh, early show. I think we're on at like eight or eight or something like that. Um, we had a choice as a third band. The guy, touring guy, get, always gets to pick. He wanted to play in the middle, like smart people do, because you get front and the, and the back crowds. And um, hang on a second. And so my choice was, do I want to play last on a Tuesday night when people ain't, ain't going to stay, or do I want to play first? I said, screw it, I'll play first. So we're playing like 8 o'clock or maybe 8.15 or something. Uh, and that's Tuesday, October 18th, and I highly recommend coming out to not just for us, but for them too. Um, so, uh, yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm so happy that we didn't have Dead Gremlins during the show. Um, I'm very happy. We gave you the full hour. We're at an hour and three minutes right now. So, again, thank you so much for all your time and, and jamming with us and, and, and telling us a little bit about yourself. Oh, well, thank you all for having me. I super appreciate it. And, um, um, I super appreciate it and love all the way around y'all. Um, thank you, Renee, for we making love. a nice smooth show for us. All and right. It was good. I had fun. Thank you, Roy Penland for being here. And again, here's the link for everyone who wants to support his Guinness, uh, world record to set the world record. And, uh, Rory, what do you think? Should and Jeff you play us see, out? You can see this on YouTube right after, uh, just, just go and look up. It's casual Rory Penland. You'll find it. It'll be up at the top. It'll be oh, right cool. there. So it wasn't on YouTube. It's just, it, it just comes on after this. Is that right? It's it's archived on YouTube forever. Immediately. Yes. But, but it wasn't live on YouTube, right? Yes, it was. It's live. Yes, also okay, live cool. on YouTube. Yeah. I, was, I was just waiting to see how many people were going to bitch at me because I told them it was live on YouTube. It is. It, <laughs> it is. Was. You told them so it's right live, but it also you archives did. there. Yeah. Hey. Hooray, so, hooray. But yeah, yeah, thank y'all so much Would you for like having to me. You want to play us out, Jeff? Rory, yeah, let me play it real quick. Sure. Yeah, hey, this was fun. about two minutes. Uh, All right. Um, that's, uh, people ask, what's your show about? It's about two minutes. <laughs> um, uh, this, this is on the uh, guitars, flute, and music, beer, dog. And I wrote this one um, after John Lewis died. And this is called Good Trouble. Oops, not like that. That's bad trouble. <laughs> Are you a horse? Are you a cow? No worries, don't matter now. The race is on, the choice is yours. Make some good trouble. The sky is wide, earth is full. You can't pack your sheep's heart with wool. The chase is on, the blood is yours. Make some good trouble. Good trouble. 